Fernando, uh, we're going to talk about the major projects office and the issue around governance, permitting, coordination, regulations, that sort of thing. And one of the complaints has always been in, in you know, Canada had just has too much regulation and it, you know, projects get bogged down and, and it, it prevents, you know, uh, developers, uh, and utilities, whoever it is from moving forward with, with projects. And the, the idea was to bring the major projects office on to smooth out those issues. Uh, and what's your take, uh, you know, given that we were talking about the climate uh, competitiveness strategy, how does the major projects office fit into that strategy? So the major projects office is going to be interesting. And now my members with wind, solar and energy source, we're not captured by any sort of federal overarching regulation. But what we're hoping is it develops an interesting model that can be applied on throughout Canada's regulatory system. And it's kind of a sandbox, if you will. So what they've said is they're not it's not an exemption to any regulation. What uh, the major projects office will do is it's going to say, no, we're just going to set a timeline for giving you a yes or a no. Or if it's listed, we're going to find it, have a timeline to create the conditions to get beyond yes and get to construction. So it's finding those elements. Now, Kenria, we've been a huge proponent of something called one ecosystem, one review. Now they do say one project, one review, but again, our tech, our projects don't tend to be hit at the federal level for major project things. But where we come into problems is on items like wildlife reviews and migratory birds reviews and fisheries and oceans permitting. Uh, so we would love to see one permit that doesn't skip over any of the environmental protections. That's very important to note is one of the things this doesn't do is skip over indigenous consultation, skip over any of that. It just kind of says, we can't drag it out any further beyond this. We need to actually get moving because that's always where it runs into. And when we come into that, and our proposal is saying, look, the Department of Fisheries and Oceans regional office will take a review if you, heaven forbid, slightly disturb a stream bank. And just say you find one pileated woodpecker nest, which non-migratory bird, by the way, but that's besides the point. Uh, and you have some rare grass and a sage grouse kicking about in there. All of those will require separate permits going to separate groups and separate individuals where the federal government, and we're hoping, can step in and work with the provinces who administer that and their various things and say, okay, folks, we have two years. Let's turn it around. Let's review this. And let's make sure that my members, when they're putting a project forward to get built, uh, can actually just have one permit to put it in. Because instead of having a biologist who goes out and does the field survey and goes, oh, I found the bird and I found the mole or the whatever, have to go back and repeat the process and repeat the process and repeat the process. It's easier for everyone to go right. with I mean, between the three levels of government and, and then of course there are in indigenous cons consultation requirements. So between the three levels of government, uh, that's a lot of permitting and a lot of certificates, a lot of permits that have to be, have to be issued and they don't always get issued in a timely fashion. Uh, so I, I, I get it. My problem with the major projects office uh, right off the bat was that a lot of the, the first five nation building projects that were announced that will be managed by the major projects office were all around, uh, you know, LNG and they, you know, mining and the traditional kinds of things that the Canadian uh, industry does, you know, the hewers of wood, drawers of water. And it looked like there was going to be a lot more of that. I mean, the, um, you know, Don Farrell, who is uh, the head of it was, her last job was CEO of the Trans Mountain Expansion Pipeline. Uh, you know, so it looked like that. But now that the focus has come back on the expansion of power grids, the expansion of electrification and, uh, and you know, projects like, you know, power generation projects like your members will be undertaking, we forget that Don Farrell was also the CEO of, of ATCO Utilities exactly. and has that kind of a background. So he has a background in electricity uh, infrastructure and regulations and so on. So now it makes a lot of sense why she would be put in there and and it looks like the major project, projects office and the one Canadian Economy Act might it has the potential to to 
get past the, the regulatory roadblocks and really accelerate the, uh, imp the electrification of the Canadian economy. Would you agree or disagree? I would agree. And I think in a past uh, discussion we've had is we talked about regulatory sandboxes and the ability to create that. And I think that's really the key thing that the major projects office is able to do. And they're able to sit down and find those paths, find that sort of interlocutors, especially on something like Wind West, which will really help make the Atlantic region able to access all that fantastic wind and solar resources and tie it into larger markets where they can use that electricity. So we're going to start to see those sort of learnings. And because, yes, the first five were fairly traditional projects and frankly, were very well permitted already. But what those will do is it allows the major projects office to have that training wheels, to get that understanding and stand itself up and go, all right, these came through. Where are your stumbling blocks? Where are the things in those processes? And how can we address that as we go forward? And then how can we learn from that and apply it to the other permitting regimes in other areas and share that across the provinces? Fernando, uh, always interesting. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Always a pleasure, sir. Looking for our next chat.